at Brad Woodhouse is the communications director for the Democratic National Committee, and Sean Spicer is the communications director for the Republican National Committee. Gentlemen, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank so, you. Let's start with uh, the 11 toss-up states. Brad, I'm going to start with you because it's all shifted mm -hmm. basically away from the president, and particularly in a couple states that have to truly be worrisome to you, and that's Pennsylvania uh, and Michigan. And if you throw in Wisconsin and Iowa, these are states that I think it's something like five of the last six presidential elections, they've actually stayed in the Democratic column. Well, and we're confident they will again, Chuck. I mean, let's, let's emphasize what you said earlier. We are a year away uh, from the election, and right now the entire race has been played out with the Republicans really having their say and their say has been to bash the president to mislead about his record and to try to one-up each other and how anti Obama they can be so we've got a long way we're we're you know this is a marathon it's not a sprint we've got a long way to election day and we're doing the hard work in the states I mean these folks are focused on three or four states right now we've got operations in 50 states we're open on average three offices a day mm -hmm. we're raising a lot of money as you have seen more than the entire field uh, on the other side combined so uh, you know Know, there's a long way between now and election day. C clearly, we'd love for everything to be rosy, but uh, this is going to be a close election. You know, um, can I, Sean? Yeah, I was just going to say, okay, yeah. Sean. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting here is that uh, one reason, one reason we have Michigan in our toss-up category is because of Mitt Romney. Now, if Mitt Romney's not there, for instance, is he the only? Do you agree with our assessment that Mitt Romney's the only candidate you have that expands the map? No. Michigan has the third highest unemployment in the country behind California and Nevada. The people of Michigan, you know, I understand its recent trends, but at the end of the day, when people look around and say, hey, we don't have a job, things aren't getting better, they're willing to make a change. And I think so, Michigan is like a lot of these other toss-up states where the unemployment is the number one, unemployment is the number one issue. Foreclosures are another issue in a lot of these states as well. And I think there's a point at which they say, we didn't buy in, hope and change didn't work for us, we need to move in a new direction, we need to get back to, to uh, an agenda. Let me ask you a couple of 2011 that. questions, though, about swing states. Just hang on a minute. All right. Sean, I want to begin with you. How concerned are you about Ohio if this ballot measure that basically in some ways has become a referendum on the Republican governor there, John Kasich, will make Ohio a little bit harder for you guys to win? Not at all. It's, I think, it, again, Chuck, I, I think at the end of the day, when people go to the polls next year, they're going to ask themselves a very simple question, which is, are you better off? They're not. And I think that they're going to look at President Obama and say, you didn't deliver on what you said you were going to do. We're, uh, unemployment continues to rise. The national debt continues to rise. Our policies are not working. The wrong track in this country is at 75%. Who, who, I mean, there's no employee in America that can say, hey, I, I came into a job, I said I was going to do the following things, I didn't achieve any of them, will you rehire me? Look, now, let me, but, but Brad, let let me, me ask respond you, to this. I understand, I, I will admit, but I, wanna, I want you to answer the Virginia question. In okay. Virginia, a state you guys have to win. I don't know a scenario that says you guys win without it. Sure, you can play with the numbers, but it's certainly microcosm. You've got Democrats that are trying to run with the Republican governor. So almost the opposite issue of what's going on with Republicans in, in Ohio uh, is Democrats in Virginia almost running away from the president. Well, look, the, the, we, we feel good about Virginia. We know we know the demographics in Virginia. We know Hampton Roads. We know Northern Virginia. And again, we're a year out. We're a year out from the election, and they have uh, they have elections in that state uh, right now that are that are unique to 2011. They won't be the same I issues uh, that'll be uh, dealt with in in 2012. But let me talk about the Rust Belt in the Midwest uh, a little bit. Wisconsin, Ohio. You have governors there who are incredibly unpopular. And look, Sean wants to make this race a referendum on the president. We're going to make sure it's a choice. It's one reason we're doing all the work we are now. It's one I heard this a lot raising. in 2004, it, but is it not? At some point, it is a referendum on the president to a point. Well, is well it it, it, to, to a point, uh, to a point, it would be a referendum on uh, on everybody that's in office right now. That includes the Republican leadership, uh, Republican leadership in the House. But in Michigan, for example, whether Mitt Romney's the nominee or not, Republicans would have just had them shut the lights out, but what close you, up. Uh, they they didn't want to save the American automobile but, industry. They opposed that effort, and the people. Of Michigan to remember, the president took a big risk, right. and he saved what do you the say American about this auto. But, 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 Romney was not on the right. Uh, on the he said, on the, let on the right side. But, 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 I mean, but at the end of the day, this there's still the third largest state of unemployment. Look at that, where they would have been. But though, let's go back to Virginia Sean. for a second. You can't get a Democrat in Virginia to campaign with the president. Tomorrow we will win the state senate in Virginia. Starting in 2009 with Bob McDonnell coming back, Virginia has totally trended back red again. And what what you're seeing more 
surprisingly, and you can say, well, it's just a state race, but you can't get a guy running for dog catcher to appear with the president of the United States in Virginia, Northern Virginia, Southern Virginia, Hampton well, Roads. And, and so at the end of the day, as he heads in and tries to build this 50 state organization, to build it, it relies on people. Last time when Obama was campaigning, admittedly, people were flooding. They wanted to be part of the organization. Now they're look, begging elections. people to show up at an event. Look, Sean, right. elections, are, elections are unique. And the 2009 elections and all the special elections that Democrats win didn't predict the 2010 elections. Whatever happens tomorrow is not going to predict the 2012 elections. What's going to predict the 2012 elections is a choice between our vision to get the economy moving again and Republicans that want to go back to doing the same things that crashed the economy in 2008. Right, very quickly, and then we're going to talk about why you guys actually are working together. Uh, I, I just think USA Today did a poll last week, which I know you guys covered on the show, but there isn't a battleground state where he's doing well. And at the end of the day, they have an enthusiasm gap. They have a gap with, with every one of the major, major the president, coalitions. Every me, but seniors, every general Jewish number voters, has moved away black from voters, him. Well, you name you know it. What? You, youth. you know what? If you told me with Republicans hell-bent on crashing the economy to win an election, you told me the situation that we're in with the economy, that when Quinnipiac came out and we were beating every Republican by five points or up to double digits a year out, given every, all the other challenges we face, I'd say we're in pretty good shape. All right. You guys are working together. It's, we don't often have any Democrats or Republicans working together on anything. <laughs> right. It sure you too. Like right here. And it doesn't sound like you guys are hot. Or you're, yeah. I like it. Uh, but you two are working on something together, having to do with people in your industry who are flax, but not for parties for America and the troops. Tell right. me more about it. So Brad and I joke that, that we, we do this. We go to battle every day, but there's a group of folks, about 50 public affairs officers over in Afghanistan, and those are the guys who are really doing battle. They uh, actually do battle. To actually do battle. They're out in the front lines. They're taking journalists out into the field, putting their lives on the line every day. And Brad and I sat down and said, hey, you know what? With Veterans Day coming up, let's get come together, bring some of our best communicators, both Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. put the Republican chairman, Reince Priebus, and, and his boss uh, Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz together for an event with all yep. of the top media, including you, right, right. for an event where we can contribute gifts to make sure that they have the best and holiday And this, this takes place when? It takes place on Wednesday at Bull Feathers, uh, 6 to 8 o'clock yep. on uh, Capitol Hill. We've got some great groups, Good stuff. beer wholesalers and the and Clean Coal Association all out there. Great way to get get ready to watch the CNBC, the CNBC debate. debate. <laughs> there you Absolutely. go. John Spicer, Brad Woodhouse, you guys brought it today. Happy brought birthday, the Brad. Happy birthday, Brad. Thank you Very so nice. much. All right. Thank you both. Presidential candidate Rick Santorum.